from picking up Dennis Schroeder and Josh Richardson on cheap one-year deals to extending their 23-year-old center with supreme potential in Robert Williams III, Tatum and Brown have gotten some solid pieces around them. Here's how Brad Stevens has excelled in the opening months of his tenure as GM, and every reason for why the Boston Celtics are quiet winners of the 2021 offseason. Over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you fall into that percentage, help the channel get to 50k by subscribing. Also leave a thumbs up, it really helps the video spread to more people. When you've got two of the best wing players in the world on the same team, you can't afford to stay patient. Players are demanding trades and leaving in free agency so often nowadays that front offices have to do everything in their power to keep their stars happy. While former president Danny Ainge may not have understood that sense of urgency he needed to have, given he never pulled the trigger on deals to acquire players like Anthony Davis and Kawhi Leonard, on the other hand, the recently promoted and former coach Brad Stevens hasn't messed around. The first move for Boston was back in June when Kemba Walker, a 2021 first round pick and a 2025 second round pick, were sent to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Al Horford, Moses Brown, and a 2023 second round pick. This deal secured a ton of financial flexibility as the Seas owed Walker $73 million on his remaining contract. Along with that salary cap relief, the Celtics also welcomed back Al Horford. He played a career low 28 games last year in OKC, and he was underwhelming in his first tenure with the Seas, but as a backup center, Stevens is confident that Horford can provide value, saying Al played a critical role both on and off the court during his time in Boston, and we're very excited to welcome he and his family back to the Celtics. His ability to elevate his teammates with his experience and leadership make for a great addition. Next, on July 30th, Boston swapped Tristan Thompson for Chris Dunn of the Atlanta Hawks. Dunn's a solid defensive guard who didn't get much opportunity in Atlanta, and while he showed his youth as a young player in Chicago, Chris just needs the right situation. So Dallas Mavericks wing Josh Richardson opted into the final year of his contract and was traded to the Boston Celtics for Moses Brown. Richardson will now play with his fourth team in four seasons after starting his career with the Miami Heat and spending single seasons with the Philadelphia 76ers and Mavericks. Since the Seas lost Evan Fournier to the New York Knicks in free agency, the combination of Dunn and Richardson provides a solid replacement for the Frenchman. Most specifically, Richardson adds some serious value spacing the floor for Tatum and Brown, plus providing a defensive upgrade over Fournier. So, New York got the scoring they needed with Fournier, and Boston gets the perimeter defense they needed around Tatum and Brown with Jay Rich. Also, the trade for Richardson was savvy salary cap maneuvering by Boston. The Celtics had roughly $11 million left on their trade exception from the Gordon Hayward to Charlotte deal. Richardson's $11.6 million salary for next season wouldn't fit into that exception. However, as the league year has not yet flipped, Boston can trade for him at his $10.8 million 2020-21 salary and therefore fit him into the exception. Some great stuff from a rookie GM in Brad Stevens. Another deal for Boston boosted their depth at the center spot. They signed post-up specialist and another former Celtic, Ennis Cantor. Behind Robert Williams III, who we'll get to in a minute, these pickups give the Celtics solid frontcourt depth. Horford's approaching father time at age 35, so splitting his minutes with the far more spry 29-year-old Cantor should be a nice balance behind RW3. The most infamous acquisition took place on August 10th, after Schroeder previously turned down a massive four-year, $84 million contract to return to LA, the Seas stole him for just $5.9 million over one year. Blazer guard CJ McCollum offered some wise wisdom to Schroeder a few days ago, saying, don't turn down money you don't have. CJ's got a point. Dennis turning down that contract was a new move indeed, but now knowing how much Schroeder's worth, Boston getting him for so little was easily one of the biggest steals of 2021 free agency. Other than the Schroeder deal though, 
It's clear why the Celtics didn't make too many headlines with their offseason moves. It's because they didn't acquire a legit third star next to Tatum and Brown. But don't forget, Dennis Schroeder is one season removed from averaging 19 points and shooting 47% from the field and 39% from three-point range in his final season with OKC. His numbers fell off in LA, but he should be an upgrade from Kemba, given he'll be motivated to prove his haters wrong. All over social media, fans have been slandering Schroeder at every turn, citing overconfidence as the only reason for his big mistake. But on Instagram, Schroeder fired back at the haters and their narrative with a few simple words. Progress is a slow process, can't focus on the baggage, see what's about to happen next. If you follow the NBA casually, then Schroeder along with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are three familiar names. Maybe Robert Williams III isn't, but I'm predicting a breakout season for him in 2021. His recent four-year $54 million contract is about to be looked back on as a complete bargain. The fourth-year big man is an impactful and versatile defender. At 6'8", with a beaming 7'5 wingspan, Robert's long and quick with a decent feel for how to defend in space. With only 113 games under his belt and entering his fourth season, the center has elite defensive upside. Williams can handle most switches and pops off the grounds in an instant. He's an explosive athlete with shot blocking ability, which makes him a menace protecting the rim as a help defender. Williams is far from a finished product. He occasionally overcommits to pursuing blocks in ways that compromises the defense. He's not quite strong enough yet to handle the beefiest individual assignments on the block. However, that's where Horford coming back really shows its value. I expect Williams to add some muscle, but on nights where the Celtics are facing a post behemoth, Big Al can handle it. Most of Robert's other weaknesses are the kind that can be worked out as he gains experience. The biggest concern really comes down to his health. He's never played 55 games in a season throughout his career and only averaged 18.9 minutes per game last year. Paying Williams at the level Boston is over the next four years won't be a disaster if he can find a way to stay on the court, but they'll certainly have gotten the short end of the stick if Robert's missing a third of the season. Having said that, the other end of that coin comes with a ton of potential. Having a long-limbed, uber-disruptive defender who allows teams to experiment with any defensive scheme is the most valuable defensive skill set. There's an argument to be made that rim protectors like Rudy Gobert are more useful in the regular season, but when the playoffs arrive, versatility is king. Williams doesn't have the IQ to be the very best of his player archetype, but his physical gifts are significant enough that it's not crazy to suggest that if he stays healthy, he might reach a cut just below players like Anthony Davis and Draymond Green. But for Robert to live up to his cap hit, he'll have to develop some more. He needs to be in the right places more consistently and get better at reading pick and roll scenarios, but despite not having logged a ton of game action in his three year career, Williams has shown some serious development up to this point so there's a reason to believe he'll continue to improve. If he does, Boston may look back at his extension as a steal. Last but not least, Stevens hired Ime Udoka to take over as head coach. He most recently served under Steve Nash for the Brooklyn Nets. Udoka was a forward in the NBA for five teams from 03 to 2011 before embarking on a coaching career that started in 2012 with the San Antonio Spurs. Given the Nigerian Udoka spent seven years gaining knowledge from one of the greatest coaches in league history, Popovich, his elevation into a head coach was long overdue. Having played in the league, the now 44-year-old should better relate to Tatum and Brown than Stevens could. These moves solidify the Seas as the under-the-radar winners of the 2021 offseason. The core of Tatum, Brown, and Smart not only has a ton of young talent on the rise next to them like they had last season, but they've got some two-way veteran players who are ready to contribute to a championship run. What was the best move of Boston's offseason in your opinion? Let me know down below. Hope you have a great day. DFlow signing off.